talk a little bit about our process, how we are feeling about when we're doing controlled remote viewing, what happened with us. It is not a purpose to convince somebody that is the best way, that's the only way, or to discredit other people or whatever. We're trying only to to show you how we are going through that process, what, how, how we are feeling about it. So mm -hmm. I guess I explained it right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like CRV for me, like I, I feel, you know, it's a very, I'm very comfortable with it now. Um, you know how it is where you, know, you do so many sessions, like once, once all that, once all the structure is like just so ingrained in your mind, all that falls away. Um, so I think that's why I like CRV, you know, like especially now, I'm just kind of really comfortable with the, with the, um, you know, with the, with the, the modality of it, but, um, you know, but it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's weird because it's, it's funny. Like some of these other, I know remote viewers that do like TRV and CRV, you know, and they like swear by TRV, but that was like what they first learned on. Um, and they prefer it for whatever reason. And if it works for them, whatever, you know, I don't, you know, um, I think once you hit that, like that stage four and a half, it really doesn't matter. Like once you hit that uh, level um, within the target, like that that part of the aperture, it's almost like you're writing your own ticket anyway, kind of thing. Uh, I get it. We prepared here for, ses uh, for sessions and let's talk about PI, uh, AV and uh, name and what we are doing there. Um, yeah, the whole the whole header, um, you know, like when I sit down to do a session, like that whole header, it's like a, um, it's kind of like you're preparing yourself to go into this psychic functioning. Uh, you know, uh, it just for whatever reason, it feels like it's kind of like, um, especially after a while, it's like it's mentally preparing you to jump to dive right into the session. Yeah, it is a little bit like like a kind of ritual. I mean. Uh, I'm starting all of the time here with my name or my viewer number, and then my location, where I am. Uh, most of the time I'm writing only at home uh, because in other projects or something, not everybody has to know exactly where I am, but it is a personality, uh, personal decision how everybody uh, hands that, handle that. And then the date and the time, and then if I'm doing that uh, alone, solo, or myself, I've got a monitor, um, and if I've got a monitor, I put in, put inside the monitor here. Um, when I'm starting with this progress, it is like I'm settling myself down already. You know, so like mm -hmm. now it's the time for remote viewing session. It's a, it's a, it's like a habit. You know, it's for me to start. Yeah. How, how you're seeing that? Yeah, yeah, and you, like you could tell. I like I could just tell by your writing. It's I mean, you know, you could just tell when you're ready to dive in like um like my writing is like when it's like it seems like it's really bad right out of the gate like it just feels like it i mean when i sit down for a session like after i do my whole header before i hit the coordinates i literally do one of these like my hand and it's almost and it's That's natural to do that it's almost like my subconscious like bring it on <laughs> I, it's like a ritual you know or a ritual yeah, yeah. i don't know exactly in english that name it's like a ritual you're doing something i'm starting to go over my over my uh, i've got my page here and i'm starting to touch the page you know it's same like my ritual you know as a fame uh people everybody have his own small ritual how to get into a good session um, i put my pi on a separate sheet because usually it's pretty ex it's usually a pretty extensive list yeah, that uh, would be the next what I what I want to talk about that because um, when we're going to the PI, uh, personal inclemencias in English, is that right? Yeah, it is, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, sometimes I need five minutes for that. Sometimes uh, even more longer. When we're seeing our perception system and Wemo viewing, it's only um, trying to, to explain it in similar uh, words here, like we're going in a deep meditation and trying to hold us so clean as possible without that our left brain is jumping in. It's like focusing on that, what I've got to do. So in this case, I'm writing everything, really everything out what uh, 
come into my mind here as an example, fear of failure, cat is meowing, I'm tired, happy about uh, whatever uh, my session, uh, a little cold, uh, feeling too much sugar in the body, humming sounds outside, and all what could me could could avoid a good session, I put in there. And when I'm finished with that writing here, um, here tired, exhausted, excellent, setting, blah blah. Um, I'm really saying to myself, okay, thank you, subconsciousness. Um, I know all these all these things are inside me; they are there. But at the moment, I will take care later of it. One hundred percent. But at the moment, we have got to uh, to accomplish a mission together, and um, then it's the point where going from my PI into my AV advanced visuals. So sometimes, how you said, it is so much that you take another another sheet, separate sheet. Uh, again, here separate sheet. Just the one reason what what you said, and the other most of the times sometimes things are so personal nobody have to read it you know so yeah a lot of mine, yeah a lot of mine are like if i'm feeling a sense of like you know like if it's a demo or something or like a sense of nervousness or just whatever you know it's it's for me you know what i mean so and it's in a lot of, i put a lot of those insecurities in my pi so that's another reason why i i have a second <laughs> i don't often have an av but sometimes i do um but usually my PI is pretty extensive. Yeah. And it's okay. like a way of clearing your mental screen. You know, it's like, because when I look down at my sheet of paper, to me, once you start getting in the session, it's almost like you're, it's almost like you're looking at the whiteboard of your mind. It's like, like a mirrored reflection of your mind. And you're going to go into this interrogation process, you know, where you're kind of talking to yourself, trying to get this information out. Uh, okay. So it's best to clear it up as best you can. There are many things can pop up. Some 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 things are uh, have to do with my body itself or all bodies. It's cold. My sitting position is not right, uh, or kind of illness. Um, I'm ill a little bit, and <clears throat> I'm schnupfen them. Have something with my nose, whatever. Then emotional things can pop pop up. Yeah, something out of my past or something at a current situation in my life. Something what uh, what uh, what holds me busy, holds my brain busy, stress, all stuff like that, and um, and really rare cases, uh, these are spir spiritual things uh, where I'm so in a in, in a state of thinking about a spiritual thing, what what uh, keeps me on the loop, you know, I've got to bring that all out in the PI. It's the best thing uh, how we can do that. You know, after after a session, I take them all, look at look at it, and trying to think about how I can help myself in that situation. Yeah, I think the PI, I think it's a great um, tool, especially when you get used to using it, um, because so much of the process is getting stuff coming in and parking it where it needs to go, you know, whether it be AOL or, you know, whatever it is, um, you know, is just, you know, grabbing it, putting it in its spot letting go of it and then moving on to the next thing um because in the beginning i you know when you're not properly dragging you're not probably like dumping aol stuff like that you end up dragging all that mess into your session yeah. it, it comes up to light yeah. so okay how you're handling advanced visuals that's a super interesting point we have got like here you had an mm -hmm. a we what are you thinking about and how you handle that? What What is an advanced visual for you? Um, you know, I don't have, you know, I don't often like have, at least anymore, a big advanced visual. But just to kind of, just to, just to kind of utilize it though, I almost like, I just basically before the session, after I've done my PIs, I kind of look up to the left and see if there's any big picture, the first big picture that comes into my mind, whatever, a house, a tank or whatever. I just put that down because I, often I don't have anything, but just to, just to make sure, kind of like a double check, I'll just kind of like look up in my mind and what picture pops up, you know, whatever that is, I'll write it down and then move on. Um, you okay. know, uh, that's it. go ahead. So your, your handle is uh, same like in uh, pre-AOL. Uh, stuff like that 
um, mm -hmm. I, I know for myself, uh, if I don't, I think it's important, if I don't have an advanced visual, I don't wide it. So keep keep the, uh, keep the whole system so easy as possible. Uh, if I've got no, like here, or like you, we, we don't wide it down. We are going through the process. We don't try to force an advanced visual. I think that's an important point. Um, for me, for myself, I'm handling uh, the advanced visuals like that in my cool down. Oh, maybe we are talking about cool down late, later also. In uh, if I'm making a cool down and it's ten or fifteen seconds or sometimes thirty seconds, um, if something popping up there, then I will roll it down. Sometimes these are uh, only uh, dimensionals mixed with colors. And everything what is independent what I'm, uh, depend on what I'm seeing there. Um, the other possibility for myself is that a word is popping up in my mind. You know, I'm I'm in the, uh, I I have my had my cooldown, my, made my PI, PI, and then something's popping up like like I know something is it maybe uh, it's a train or something, and then I'm widening that down also. Sometimes without that, I'm seeing something. You know, for, for me for myself, it's not. Every time, it don't have to be a visual. You know, everything, what, my preconception of that, what, what, what can come uh, on which channel ever, uh, I, I will write it down. So I handle, handle it like that. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Like in the beginning, when you first start, you know, I see this online a lot. When people talk about, oh, you know, they, they feel these really strong impressions, you know, and, they're, and it's almost like they're chasing these really strong impressions. And I personally believe that when you're first starting to get familiar with the process of remote viewing, um, it's almost like your subconscious pushes things out almost overabundantly so you could pick up on it. Um, because like it feels to me like as time has moved on, it's less about these super strong impression and it's more about detecting um, the very subtlety of it. Right. Um, because I think what happens is like in the beginning, you're everything's so noisy and you have like, you really don't know what psychic feels like yet. So it's all like the impressions have to come way up in order for you to even pick up on it. Um, but after time you, you, it, you pick up on the very subtlety, the quick, the, the the you know you know when something flies by you or a word that you know is not in your vocabulary gotcha. you, that's good yeah uh, um yeah true thing uh I, I can't remember in my uh over three years ago when i started with remote viewing and i made my sessions and i saw to the time i've got to force myself to an advanced visual uh, it was uh, handled in another kind and i did this and then i put my first i, I can't remember exactly anymore my 40 or 50 first sessions and i'm trying to look uh how often i nailed the target in before like a precognition thing you know it was it was really high it was it was funny so we have got a sense uh in before what we will have for a target now i think to play around a little bit with that and to look at uh, to see to, i want to take all my sessions what i have now what i did in my life and want to look how high is the percentage of a direct hit in my preconception oh. um. yeah and i th i think that's another thing that's like a like a a, a mislabel you know, people you know there's these modalities that are you know that really concentrate on you know like focusing on the visual and stuff like that and, and it's almost like they paint the picture like you don't get visuals in crv and that's so not true i mean i get visuals all the time but you could you could detect the distinct difference between you know big aol visual uh, and target visual you know it's 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 very it's a different feel and after you know you know how it goes as time goes by you can interpret the difference you know it, it is the time i can remember one session it was i think about stone or something and i had so this typical clear clear crystal clear picture of an of a door with uh, gray and silver and a little bit wet and i was so sure i was so co convinced from from that aol that i put this all of the time inside and this was uh one of of, of the key moments uh, in my career where, where 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 i really uh understood ah that's a pure left brain analytical overlay 
know, and over the time I learned when it's really like uh, fuzzy, blurry, it's moving a little bit and it's more like I say now, like flying, you know, like comes something, you can say, okay, it's an AOL signal and I'm more at the target at all. And you know that from yourself later in stage four and especially in stage six, um, we're really able to make the difference between a pure analytical overlay, an analytical overlay signal or match, uh, depends how you want to call it, uh, or it's uh, intangible what we are seeing there. You know, this is another process and I'm still in the process to really feel the difference later, but we are going too far, I guess. But the advanced visual, yeah, it's a pre-analytical overlay before we are starting with a session. What is cooldown for you or better? How are you you're handling your own cooldown? How are you doing that? Um, well, you know, with Paul, you know, the way I was trained, he, he, Paul kind of trained us not to, you know, kind of rely on that. But um, depending on what I have going on during the day, um, for instance, if you know, I, I'm I'm going from a very chaotic, you know, doing something and then I'm sitting down to do a session. I might listen to something to kind of just kind of even out my temperament, you know, maybe may some um, like it, most most of the time. Honestly, I get up in the morning like for operational stuff. I'll get up in the morning. I'll listen to some music that will kind of just get me hyped up. Um just it kind of it's kind of like it's almost to me the cool down process is for me personally is almost like it's motivating it's reminding me that you have this awesome ability and, and you could do this and you're good at it um it's kind of like a, it's kind of like hyping me up to go go and go to, to do the project I and mean, that that's how it works for me it's kind of it gives me the um what's the word um like the confidence to go in and, and do something that that really by all you know matter of speaking shouldn't work but it does over and over um so it's, it's i kind of with that motivation um but otherwise i don't usually too much unless i'm running around i'm listening to some something sometimes i'll listen to some white noise pink noise or hemisync if there's people in the house while i'm doing a session just to basically drown out everything everything else but otherwise i i that's about it for cool down um sometimes i don't do anything it just depends on how i feel how about you yeah i i think i made experiments with nearly everything what you can do with cool down from meditation about white noise about uh pink noise about hemisync about sam technology about pure meditation about directly jump in and <clears throat> Uh, with classical music, with I really tried everything out, and for myself, I really understood it. It's it isn't. It depends on it how I want to visualize it, you know. So I make a habit out of it, and it works on the on the one or the other side, not not better, not not more, not more worse, or not not more better. Uh, it's independent for what I'm deciding. So normally I'm taking my my pages. I now have a session. Uh, it doesn't matter what I did did uh, in before maybe uh, i wash uh, dishes or whatever sitting down rest a little bit putting my here my things a little bit down close my eyes for 10 50 seconds rest and looking to my pen it's my my personal uh, ritual looking here it's the, it's the page looking at my pen Rotate it a little bit, focus, focus me on that, or on the page. And then I'm starting. That's my own personal ritual to that. And it works really, really fine. Um, I uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes before I, I see many people are there, they have a big process, sometimes 30 minutes of uh, to make a cool down. And they are convinced that they have to do it this way because somebody uh, taught them like this mm -hmm. you know? and yeah. that, this these are moments where i think hey you don't really need that you can directly jump into your session with a small ritual yeah you, you can you can put yourself an anchor if you want an anchor like to snip as an example or an anchor like 
to make this with your with your pen yeah or an anchor like are looking to depend stuff like this. everybody can build up his own coolant system so the quality of uh, of the sessions um, out of my experience uh, are not better or worse with the extensive cooldown or without i can right out of uh, right out of box make a session every time i think that and i think this is a you know this may be a personalized thing but um look even when you go into some other stuff like like you know going into for example like i'll get an impression you know once you started doing other th you get into like stage four and stuff you'll get something and in the beginning your immediate response is you want to put it into aol you know because it's so specific and it's you know and it's kind of out of left field and it's not your analytical mind putting it there it's your subconscious putting it there so it feels foreign to you so your immediate instinct is all oh, this is wrong information but when in actuality it's signal information so the whole process is really like a reintroduction of how to pro because you're so used to just your day-to-day -day life and your analytical side of your mind is driving everything um right. so so it's when you go into a crv set or any kind of remote viewing session it's really it's you're really like okay this is now you're doing something different you're processing information a different way things feel different um so it's really getting familiar with that and then once you start to trust your i mean because people will find out that there's i mean ego is so driven in the human species i mean we want to yeah, be right Everything we say, we do, it's so ingrained in us um, that we don't want to be wrong. And you see that in, in, in remote viewing because start that, part of that process is letting go of that. You know, like you just can't care. Uh, you, you can have something hot, then you can have something cold. You could have something stony, you could have something metal. You just have to let it go. Well, um, one, one of the best uh, indicators in my session is when a writing, uh, white, uh, white and impression down and in the start of the next impression i forgot already what i wrote uh, before you know if i've got a monitor sometimes i'm uh, i've got to ask uh, what, what i said or what i uh, what i objectify or stuff like that yeah completely right cool down is a personal yeah. thing yeah and i think part of the cool down is like you're getting yourself because to me the process is almost like okay in life, most of the time, like 99% of the time, the, the analytical mind is driving the car, you know, type of thing. And in a remote viewing session, the subconscious mind is coming from the back seat and is switching seats with you <laughs> very subtly. And, and they are driving the car. And so if you if you're the type of person where you like, I'm the type of guy where I want to take a big swing, I want to get in that target and just like do swoop, you know, snow angels in there, you know, I don't care what it is. <laughs> you dig out a lot of data. So I'm going to be, I'm going to kind of get lost in the target anyway. Um, as to where some people maybe just, you know, maybe rely heavily on there to kind of get into that, that kind of, um, that hem, like that, that kind of that hypnagogic type type of state. Um, that I think CRV just by processes just kind of puts you there after a while. You know what I mean? Like it just, uh, but it's an individual yeah. thing. It is for sure. I mean, as an example, um, extend remote viewing, if you're working with that, it's a, you're, it's deeper kinesthetic uh, feeling for myself. Or if I go with Hamison tape, so SAM technology uh, to a target and working with that, um, so it's I've, i felt sometimes really i'm lost in the in the target area not lost is the wrong word uh, so deep that i really forget where i am and it's here we normally i know i'm sitting here on my on my table making my session uh gazing wing data by the way i think all this has so much to do with practice i don't care if it's erv crv whatever uh like you in particular uh, you're very you know you're good both ways crv and erv uh but i think you're the type of person because you, you listen to tones and stuff like that you slip into a hypnagogic state pretty easily um as to where it takes me a long time to settle everything down uh which is kind of like why i like crv because i can just sit down and just go to work um but it, the <laughs> erv takes me a long time to get myself into that state because erv you really got to be you really have to really be in a very 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 calm like state um 
and it takes me a lot to get there. You know, as to where you just slip right into it. <laughs> directly after stage four and a half, uh, yeah. I can go directly into into a EV session with my blindfolds here. Yeah, well, good talk. I hope everybody will enjoy it and can take some information for themselves, and we can help in any way. And uh, I think for you also, David, um, if there are questions or ideas or tips or tricks what you have got uh, let us know that uh, let us talk about and let us see how we can uh, together develop our strengths in all areas of remote view sounds good buddy <laughs>